Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. On this channel we talk books and today we are talking a wrap up. A wrap up for my reading for the month of September. Now I don't actually have a whole lot to report for this month. Um, it was a bit of a lull in terms of my reading. Uh, all of the books I'm going to talk to you about that I finished, um, I finished in the first week of September and then didn't finish anything else <laughs> for the rest of the month. I did attempt to read a few things here and there um, and I've certainly made progress on some books but uh, definitely not finished anymore. So only three books to talk to you about today um, but I'm trying to not think of it in terms of only because three books is still okay. It's not where I wanted to be. Um, I'm, I'm attempting to be reading at least four books in a month um, but uh, three is almost four <laughs> and also um, I have already achieved my reading goal of 52 books so now we're into the bonus zone so uh, I'm fine with with quote unquote only reading three books in the month of September so without any further ado let's get into those three books so starting off with a poetry collection uh, it was this one Insomnia Poems by Linda Pastan um, I cannot remember where I came across Linda Pastan um, but I remember reading one of her poems and loving it and on the back of reading that poem buying a collection. Um, so this is the collection that I picked up and this was my 52nd book so this was my my gem that I <laughs> that I finished as my last book of my reading goals um, and uh, it is all themed around sleep or lack thereof um, and the thoughts that a person might have while lying awake uh, not sleeping. Um, I loved this collection. I thought it was really cohesive. I also connected with almost all of the poems which is pretty much unheard of in a poetry collection because inevitably you're going to come across a, you know a range of poems in terms of what you connect with or not. Um, almost all of them for me were, were connection poems which was great uh, and I am really glad to have discovered Linda Pastan and look forward to reading more of her poetry. I know she's got quite a few collections so I will be certainly seeking those out and looking to get to uh, her collections again. I also just want to point out as well because you know I think one of the things about a poetry collection and cohesion um, often a poetry collection even if it contains really good poems, might not have a feeling of cohesion because obviously a person is writing from the heart and they're, you know, um, expressing themselves in that way. So obviously you've kind of got to go with where your heart is. And I think the way that this collection is themed, she's been able to talk about a number of different topics because it's, you know, lying awake in bed thoughts so therefore the poems can be about other things but it still sort of comes all kind of comes through uh, with with that theme and cohesiveness in a collection I think is a really is something I certainly prize quite highly in a poetry collection so highly recommend this one I gave it five stars um what a lovely 50 second book <laughs> to to read a five star book which was amazing the second book that I finished in the month of September was Wall by Jen Craig. This was a book that was nominated and shortlisted, I believe, for the Stella Prize. No, the Miles Franklin Award uh, this year. Um, and for me, this one was just OK. Um, so it's about an Australian artist who is living abroad and they return to Sid Sydney from London following the death of her father. Um, and her plan is to create this like large scale installation artwork um, by putting together items from her father's kind of hoarder house uh, in Chatswood uh, in Sydney. And uh, so, and, and it's, you know, decades worth of hoarding and it's very sort of a reflective book. And I guess the, the overall success of that project is she finds it harder than she was anticipating to sort through the things and to, you know, also be doing this collection. It's written in a really stream of consciousness style, like she's kind of talking to somebody um, and 
she's writing it to a particular person and my guess I don't think she ever states it um, but I think it's her partner um, living in London so she's writing to this person and I guess the thing that's really interesting about this is the way that um, the way that that partnership is kind of characterized in the way that she's speaking to the person um, and sort of saying, oh, you remember when blah, 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 or, you know, you remember this guy or, you know, I was telling you about this um, and you said da, 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 you know. So it's sort of an interesting kind of like way into um, a person's relationship without entirely from their perspective without actually ever meeting the partner so that was quite interesting also the way that this char this main character kind of characterized her father and her mother the relationship she had with those people a relationship with her brother um very interesting uh, so there were definitely lots of really interesting elements in this book um i would say that the style of the writing it had few paragraphs um and also no chapters it was part one and part two that was the only sort of break that we got um it did rem make it quite difficult to remain focused and i read this one with my eyeballs it was not an audiobook so it was i had to work to stay focused and i think you know i think that just goes to show you the value of paragraphing and <laughs> um you know providing those breaks for your readers even though Maybe for the style of this book, it might not have been suitable. It really did make it more difficult to read. Um, there was, uh, I think, interest in this sort of, like there was a bit of a circuitous style to it um, uh, in the storytelling and also, um, which which I felt was mirroring a thought process. So it definitely was that kind of stream of consciousness where you sort of, kind of come back around to uh, an idea and you keep kind of dwelling on something as you're working it through in your head. That was sort of what it felt like to me. And I thought that was quite interesting. Um, I will say, and this is a tiny bit of a spoiler. Um, so if you're going to read this one, maybe you just tune out for a moment, but I felt like nothing of significance was revealed um, or resolved by the end of the book. And it sort of felt a little bit, I didn't really actually feel like I'd gotten to know the character either um, by the end of the book. So that was a bit disappointing um, and which is what kind of led me, you know, because I guess if you have to work at something, you want there to be payoff for that work and it didn't necessarily feel like that was the case here. So it was just okay for me. I gave it three and a half stars. I didn't hate it. Um, I did actually like it, but I just thought um, the hard work didn't really pay off, unfortunately, so it made it not my most enjoyable read of the year, but it was still pretty good. Um, and the last book that I finished in the month of September was also a gem, uh, and that is Brandy Sour by Constantia Soteriu. I um, apologise if I've mispronounced that name. Translation by Lena Protopapa. Um, this was a book uh, that I was reading for my Around the World reading a book club where we are reading, attempting to read a book from every country. This is a book from Cyprus, um, and it was a gem, a really, really great book. Um, so everything in this book is centered around a hotel, um, and it's the hotel, the Ledra Palace Hotel, which was, uh, I don't even know if it's a real hotel or not. I've never been to Cyprus. I'm not super familiar with how things are there. Um, but one of the, the sort of things that we like in our book club where we're reading these books is we like books that really paint a picture of the place and, uh, you know, also a little bit politically, like what's been going on, what's changed, how things are, how things were. Um, and this book really delivered on all of those things. It really gave an interesting picture um, of the divide in, uh, in Cyprus which I knew a little bit about from reading another book <laughs> about Cyprus, which was uh, Elif Shaf Shafak. Is that the author's name? I'll put the book on the screen, um, uh, the one that I'm thinking of, because the name, I, it's something to do with trees. The Island of Missing Trees, I think it's called. Anyway, um, I read that book last year, I want to say, potentially, or 
possibly the year before and it uh, I learned a lot about Cyprus from that book so I had a little bit of knowledge going into this book which I think did help me to kind of piece things together if you didn't have any knowledge of um, how things are and have been and and sort of the historic context of Cyprus then you might find it a little harder to access this book but I had a little bit of knowledge and that was actually plenty so my recommendation would be read the Wikipedia <laughs> um, you know entry on the a very brief history of Cyprus just to kind of get an idea of what happened there and what is kind of continuing to happen there uh, before reading this book but I would highly recommend essentially each chapter of this novella is kind of uh, pitched around a character so and some of the characters we do meet through other people's eyes in subsequent chapters so there are there is there are links um, and links to events that happen and are told from various perspectives um, so we start with um, a prince I think he is um, and his drink is the brandy sour so each chapter is kind of themed mostly around a drink but at least around some kind of a liquid <laughs> um, sometimes it's not a drink but most most of the time it is um, and uh, so his drink is the brandy sour and he at the end of each chapter you get um, it's almost like a little summary of the chapter as well as the recipe if it's a if, the, if it's that kind of, of uh, drink that it's around so for example for brandy sour um, it says in a highball glass one part cognac two to three drops of angostura bitters lemonade sour lemons soda water one glazed cherry on a toothpick we rim the glass with sugar we decorate with a slice of lemon and the cherry and we offer it to the king um, so that's interesting <laughs> um, and then other ones for example um, rosebud tea this is a, a future chapter mid midway through the book in a tin in a tin mug you can drink it iced and hot too you pick the tiny little buds at night in august and you dry them if you get the timing wrong you get a bitter infusion helps digest the indigestible so essentially it's sort of almost like a little summary of of the chapter but in a recipe and like instructions for the drink um, which I thought was a cool little concept that kind of flowed through the book. Um, very bite-sized chunks. Most of the chapters are quite short, so very easy to kind of pick up and put down, pick up, put down, um, which I also really enjoyed. Um, so, yeah, it sort of is political and captures kind of what's going on civilly in um, in Cyprus over time because it kind of is set over time. Um, I, an excellent novella. I enjoyed it immensely. Um, through the different perspectives and personalities, we get to see snapshots of of uh, the impacts of foreign presence in Cyprus, and we're talking about various foreign presences in Cyprus, and then the conflict that happens there, um, the devastation of that con conflict. I thought this was brilliantly done, and I gave it four and a half stars. So, those are the three books that I have read. Uh, I have one more book to talk to you about before I finish up this video and that's a DNF. Um, and I, this was a really sad DNF because I was looking forward to this book. Um, and it's one of the books that I had brought away with me when on my trip to the snow. Um, you maybe remember if you've been around um, and watched some of my other videos, I did a TBR of books, potential books to take to the snow. Uh, this was one of them and it was the one I was looking forward to the most, which is The Art of Breaking Ice um, by Rachel Mead. Um, the concept of this book was really interesting to me. So it's um, uh, based around a true, a, a real person um, and uh, I'll just read a little snippet from the back just to um, so that it's clear what I'm talking about. So it says, In 1960, when the legendary icebreaker Magadan set sail for Antarctica, it contained a secret. Hiding on board was Nell Law, wife of expedition leader Philip Law. She would make history by becoming the first Australian woman to set foot on the icy continent, but it was her art that would change everything. So essentially, this is she's a real person, and she really did go to Antarctica with her husband, um, in a sneaky way she wasn't supposed to go there there weren't supposed to be women going um, on this expedition and she sort of like broke the mold and and went anyway and then it was like well I'm here now what are you going to do about it so she got to stay 
So I was really looking forward to this because it sounded like a really interesting concept. I, she sounded like an interesting person. And essentially the author, Rachel Mead, has fictionalised this woman's life. Um, so it sounded really interesting. And then I started reading it. I did, did not get that far. I got a couple of chapters in, about 25 pages uh, out of just under 300. Um, and I just did not like the writing style. It was, um, it, okay. I'm going to try and say this in a way that doesn't sound, uh, it's, it's not for me. So it, this could very well be a book that other people would enjoy. I'm not suggesting that it's, you know, overall a terrible book, but for me, the writing tended to, um, a style that I don't love, um, which was reminiscent of a style that I've read in some um, romance novels and um, other sort of quote unquote fluffy fiction. And that's not to say I don't always enjoy fluffy fiction because I do. Uh, and there have been some ex perfect examples of romance books and um, quote unquote fluffy fiction um, that I have really enjoyed. For example, I really loved Emily Henry's Book Lovers, um, which is 100% fluffy fiction, but the writing was really good and I really engaged with that story. Here, I, the writing was fluffy in a way that I just didn't like and the characterization of, the way that this character was written almost felt like it was like a caricature of a person and I guess this is always the risk when you're writing about a real person that you don't actually know that much about because we don't have that much evidence about this person um, other than her art and some photographs and knowledge that she did this thing. Um, you, when you are fictionalizing somebody's life like that it can be when you don't know that much about it you kind of create this character and I think if you if it's done well um, it's a person that you really want to engage with but I think the way that this author characterized this person just made me not want to engage with the character at all I just didn't feel connected to her and the writing was um, fluffy in a way I just didn't like I, I don't know how else to say it um, to explain what it was about it and I, I attempted to pick it up again um, so I had I was up to maybe page 24 um, and I just yeah I started to read the chapter and I was just like no no I can't I can't do it I just can't do it um, and I have I feel like I'm getting better <laughs> at doing it and it's always difficult to do when it's a book you're excited about um and it's a book that you've paid full price for um but there are too many books and not enough time um so I'm I don't want to spend my time reading a book I don't enjoy is the bottom line so unfortunately this one for me was a DNF okay so that is the month of September that's it um, but you will be pleased to hear I have actually now that I'm recording this at the beginning of October I have actually finished another book <laughs> so I am back on track hopefully with my reading um, and I will be back to give you my uh, October wrap-up obviously at the end of this month um, apologies as well for my inconsistent uh, <laughs> posting of videos I have had a hectic month I've had um, two trips uh, I've had a very busy end of term at work um, where we were building up to some sort of big stuff um, and just trying to get all of that work done. So I just have not been reading and I have not been filming. So apologies, but hopefully we are back to a regular schedule now. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I definitely have a couple more videos already planned and in the works. So I shall be getting back to you again soon. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your patience also uh, in waiting between videos and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.